So let's look at what naturally, natural flavors are. Um, natural flavors are just industrial, um, industrial food companies can make your food taste like anything through the addition of chemicals, often named natural flavors in the ingredient listings. And I was actually going to try and find some of these natural flavorings and sort of flavor some rice. I couldn't find any natural flavorings. You can't buy them. Um, and, but they do that. Has it, any, of you, any of you ever had the chocolate orange? Where you just eat a piece of orange or a piece of chocolate and it tastes exactly like an orange. Um, the way they do that is with these natural flavorings or artificial flavorings. Um, they can make your food taste like anything uh, they want to make it taste like. And in fact, um, I've seen some interviews with people who have done tours of these natural flavoring plants, these artificial flavoring plants, um, and they go through and they just smell some of the, the fragrances coming off of these natural and artificial flavors, and they can smell a cheeseburger. You know, they can smell french fries. They can smell all of these different things, but it's just this chemical that you're smelling. And so the way that the food that you eat is processed in a lot of these fast food companies, it's so overly processed that if you actually ate it without any of these natural flavorings, it would taste like cardboard. It has absolutely no flavor to it whatsoever because of all the processing that it goes through, that they actually have to add these, these chemicals so that it tastes like food. Um, and it, so it can fool you into thinking that it, that it is food. And so you see that the, actual, the difference between natural flavors and artificial flavors is that natural flavorings are an old, old way of extracting um, these chemicals from food, from natural sources. Um, that use different alcohols and all these other things to extract these, these chemicals. Now, we've got more modern ways to actually synthesize these chemicals, and actually it's more safe, um, the synthesized version of these things, but people like the word natural. And so they always use the natural flavorings um, in, in a lot of these different foods because people are afraid of artificial flavoring. They don't trust that the artificial flavoring is good for them. Um, when in actuality, the natural flavoring often has residue chemicals left in it um, that is not very helpful to you. Um, and just to some of the things, some of these same chemicals are used to scent your candles. Um, if you go to Yankee Candle and get the cookie candle or the um, just other things, or, or your soaps that you've got. So these are the same chemicals that they're using in your food. So questions for discussion. Some of the things that um, I think are really important about this book here. You know, could you kill a chicken? Could you do what that guy did when we saw him, chopping off the head of a chicken? I think I could. Um, could you take down a cow? I don't know if I could take down a cow. Um, but you know, you're eating these, these foodstuffs. Would you personally? slaughter a cow? Would you personally slaughter a chicken? And then the question that comes after that, in my mind at least, is, you know, is, are we justified in eating this food if we wouldn't actually kill the animal ourselves? Are we justified in this type of abstraction? You know, are we being um, a civilized society if we can't do these barbaric things ourselves, but we push them off into the lower rungs of society. Um, and Teresa is actually going to talk about some of the um, conditions that we have in these slaughterhouses and some of the, you know, and just the, the poverty in our country and what we force them to do. Are we civilized when we do that? Um, what is the mentality behind fast food? And do you see this in other parts of our society? So as we're reading, this book, Fast Food Nation, um, asks the question, what is it saying about our society? You know, what is it saying about us that we you know, would rather go to this fast food place, get our food instantly, um, instead of going to the grocery store and cooking ourselves a meal? It's probably more healthy for us. What is it saying about our society? And there are, other, are there other places in our society where we can see that same type of mentality? Um, are there other places where we want instant gratification? We want instant pleasure. Um, in fact, if you heard the song before lecture, 
Um, that's the title of it from Rufus Wainwright. Instant pleasure. What do we want in our society? And do we want it right now? Um, how do these choices actually affect a society? Do they? You know, are the choices you're making when you go to McDonald's actually forming our society? Or do they mean nothing to our society? Um, what other choices that you do make actually inform who we are as American citizens? You know, we were talking about, um, when we were talking about Vietnam, how, you know, what do we do when we can't make choices? What are we doing with the choices that we actually do make? And what are we saying about our society when we do make those choices? Um, how does the knowledge of the world around you give you choice? That was one of my thesis statements, that knowledge is choice. Um, going through this lecture and actually seeing some of these things, seeing where our food comes from, and looking at you know, the, the obesity in America, does that give you choice? Um, does that knowledge give you choice? Are you living an unexamined life if you don't seek this kind of knowledge? Are you daring to be wise? Um, is industrial farming a good thing or a bad thing? I tried not to say whether or not it was a good thing or a bad thing. Um, so it's up to you to decide and do the research. You know, I've only shown you just a small clip. Do more research, find more knowledge, make more choices. Uh, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing for our society? And then what is the role of the individual in a society that idealizes monoculture and conformity? That was one of the quotes in the introduction of the book um, from the, I think it was the first CEO of McDonald's. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. But basically what he was saying is, that the individual must trust the corporation. Um, there can be no individuality. Um, the corporation is uniform, and we must trust that uniformity. You know, what does that say about our individual uh, personalities? You know, we've been studying our identity here in the first section of Core One. Um, what is it saying about the importance of that identity? Do we even need to discover what that identity is? Uh, if we're just going to be part of this monoculture, part of this conformity. Um, we could just let people tell us what to believe and what to do, and we'll just be cogs in a wheel. We'll be part of that factory farm. We'll be like in a very, very efficient ant farm or a very efficient beehive. You know, no individuals. We're all just working for the common good. Um, is that a good thing? You know, are we moving towards that in our society? through this, uh, this mentality of a fast food nation? Are we moving towards that through this factory type farming? Um, and so just think about what does that mean? What is your role as an individual in society? And so as we're going through, I think that's is that it, yeah. As we're going through um, this book here, we'll be looking at a lot of different things as far as, there's a buzzing sound that's bothering me. We'll be looking at a lot of different things um, in this book. And you'll be seeing a lot of different lectures about topics from this book. Um, ask these questions. Uh, look for different theses in the book. Um, there's a lot of statistics in it. I know it's a hard book to get into because of all those statistics. But just plow through it, and you might actually gain a little bit of knowledge about how your food is made, and so you can make choices as an individual, and you can form our society into what you want our society to be. Thank you.